<clears throat> well, welcome back, everyone. Um, this session will be uh, in this session we're going to deliver a lecture by Professor Eduardo Gomez Garcia, who is a research professor at the Universidad Autónoma de San Luis Potosí, and he leads a quite large, I have to say, research group on experimental uh, quantum physics. Um, I am truly pleased to. Um, we have you around, uh, Eduardo. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation. Uh, your contribution to this uh, to this conference will be crucial to understand what is the state of the what the state of the art of Mexican quantum technologies is. Uh, but before uh, passing the word to you, I would like to say that um, Eduardo is. Um, let me briefly read his um, his biography. Um, he did his PhD in physics, working in precision atomic spectroscopy, using francium atoms with Dr. Luis Orozco at the University of Stony Brook. Then he continued with a postdoc working with excitations in sodium Bose-Einstein condensates with Paulette, Dr. Paulette, sorry, at the National Institute of Standards and Technology as part of the group of Dr. William Phillips. He has been a faculty member of the Autonomous University of San Luis Potosí since 2007. He started the Cold Atoms Lab that uses laser cooling techniques for precision measurements. And in particular, he works in converting the atoms into very sensitive devices that measure the gravitational acceleration. Um, um, Eduardo has received a number of awards for his work. He, for example, he got the most prestigious Cátedra de Marcos Moschinsky. He also uh, has also been awarded the Research Award of the Academia Mexicana de Ciencias in the area of exact sciences and the Tandem Award. And, um, and finally, Eduardo is a former president of the uh, division of the Quantum Information Division of the Mexican Society of Physics. And um, well, he's a fantastic colleague, and I'm very pleased, as I said, um, to have him here with us. I'll pass it on to you, Eduardo. Be welcome, and thank you very much. Thank you. So good afternoon to everybody, and I would like to thank Salvador and the other organizers for uh, giving me the opportunity to present here. I would like to, let me start sharing. I would like to uh, discuss the work that we have done in Mexico towards a quantum initiative. And so uh, this is an old slide uh, uh, with the status of the investment back in 2018 from Optics and Photonics News. And what I want to highlight from this uh, old slide is that if you see the investment that we have in Mexico, it reads zero. And for that matter, in most of Latin America, the, the same situation happened, except for Brazil, as we already heard from uh, Marcelo. Uh, even in the current Cureca uh, map, we're still at zero, which is close to right. So uh, this got us thinking, this was the point where everybody was really taking it very seriously. seriously. And so we, we decided to think, are we going into this train? Are, are we going to enter this emerging market? And if we are going to do that, we are the Excuse ones that, Eduardo. I'm yes. very sorry to interrupt you. I'm, I'm no sorry problem. that uh, uh, your microphone is a bit noisy. I don't know whether we could do something to adjust it because it's got a lot of noise, background noise. Um, really? Yeah, it's going to become harder and harder to understand. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, with the same noise. To see the vibrations of your voice were actually having an impact on the... Ah, on the did we not, how about like this? Is it better or is it the same? Kind of the same. What if I talk closer to the microphone? Is that better? It's going to be a bit noisy, but I think it's going to be clearer too because your voice is louder. Thank you very much. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, it was working fine before. I don't know what happened. It, so please interrupt me if, if something is uh, not clearly heard. So uh, we decided to get into... Uh, to see if we can, we can do something about it to, to enter this market. So before I tell you about what we concluded, uh, I would like to give you an overview of the uh, background of the Mexican quantum science. Probably the first landmark was in 2007. Uh, uh, is this a little bit better, Salvador, for the understanding? Yeah, um, I don't know if you had some headphones. That no. Really okay, weird. don't worry, then, then go ahead. As long okay. as you're close to the, to the mic, uh, we shall be able to understand. 
Thank you. Okay, so uh, the first important landmark was in 2007, where the Division of Quantum Information of the Mexican Physical Society was created. And an important thing from this uh, time was that this allowed the community to uh, get together once a year for, for the conference of the division. And we started talking to each other. Uh, this was done in part because of the efforts of our theoretical colleagues. Uh, there were not that many experimental groups at that time. So uh, they, it was clear that we needed to push that a little bit more. The second steps probably happened, probably happened in 2015 with the creation of uh, the Network on Quantum Technologies, which was uh, something that Conasi decided to do to group people with common interests in, 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 in certain big groups. So we created this group, which didn't really make quantum technologies at that point. I would say that most of the work was still academic, uh, academic work. But this gave us a little bit more money, and this allowed us to uh, start a program of interchange between, between groups, and that strengthened the collaborations. And we also uh, continue having our summer research program, but now with the students attending national labs, which was not the case before. So that, that money was very useful also. And finally, I would say that at 2014, we had the creation of the a National Laboratory of Quantum Matter, uh, which also uh, was the idea of this laboratory was focusing on the experimental part, and that uh, gave a little bit more money where a few new labs were created, and some of the existing labs were strengthened by, by this uh, money. Here I can show you the, the numbers we had, for example, back in 2019, which is very similar to what we have uh, nowadays, so we had a community of a little bit shy of 200 members, around 60 researchers, a good number of postdocs, and a very healthy number of students uh, involved. The community is spread of over 12 states and 18 institutions. And just to give you an idea, our production during the year 2019 was about something like 90 research articles. Uh, and seven PhDs and H master students. So this is, this is more or less what we have in Mexico nowadays. If you want more information, you can uh, go into this uh, web page, which, which is the web page of the uh, um, Network on Quantum Technologies. This is a map taken from there where you can see the location of the different groups participating in the network. This network is, this, is not, this doesn't have up-to-date information because the network stopped receiving money a couple of years ago, but still the information that you can find there, it's uh, very uh, relevant for what we have nowadays of all the groups working on this. You can also look for more information in this other web page. This is the web page of the National Laboratory on Quantum Matter. And especially there, you can get an idea of what we have on the experimental side. Uh, these are some of the groups, which I would say is most of the groups in Mexico nowadays in these topics. And you can see at the platforms that we have developed in Mexico, there is quite a few number of groups working with uh, cold atoms, most of them with rubidium. There is uh, some groups also working with photons, with the speciality of generating correlated photons. And recently, they're, they're starting to appear some groups that work with mesoscopic systems. So this, this is what we have from the experimental point of view. Now, with that in mind, we uh, went through the exercise of uh, uh, at, at that year of uh, starting a Mexican initiative on quantum technologies. And we thought about what would be the guiding principles for that uh, initiative. The first one was that we were interested in having, at the end of the day, commercial technologies or companies uh, technology-based companies. That was the objective. Even though there is a good science that it's been done by different groups, the emphasis of this initiative was going to be on these two uh, things. We wanted to, the, the, whatever, whatever we choose to do, we want these to, we should have support from existing groups that will be the base from that development. And we were interested on in having more than one, just one group to have collaborative efforts and that helped us deciding what is best for, for the country. 
and if, if possible, to do things that were relevant for uh, of national relevance, problems that are uh, important for Mexico. So these were the things that we uh, put into the discussion. Uh, we found some problems, uh, as, as I'm sure was the same with uh, Marcelo with their own initiative in Brazil. These are typical uh, problems we, we find in Latin America. The first one is that there is little motivation from the scientific side, meaning that the uh, way we are evaluated, uh, it puts too much weight on publications and something as risk, uh, risky as a product, developing a product that includes many engineering steps is not uh, uh, motivated in, in, in our current system. The second problem is it's very hard, as we all know, to find a competitive product in market. One thing is to do research and the other thing is to know what will work in a, in a market. And we have to find money financing these projects. There's a lack of an academic program in quantum technologies in Mexico. We had a discussion of what that we wanted to create a center or not, not meaning where we're going to put the money. And the engineering link is missing. Uh, this is very typical also everywhere. And we have a poor interaction between academy and industry. So we had to try to look into these issues and try to, to, to decide what will be realistic, what will be viable for Mexico if we want to enter this, this market. Uh, at the end of the discussion, we uh, decided at the end on six uh, areas, six general areas where that met all the requirements that I mentioned before. Uh, these areas are atomic gravimetry, quantum imageology, integrated optical circuits, quantum cryptography, quantum algorithms, and all of this was had to, had to be supported with an academic program on quantum technologies to, to create the human resources needed. Now, this is great. This gives us uh, the general directions that we wanted to follow, but this is still very general for, for a roadmap, roadmap, for example. We, we needed to aim a little bit more precisely to what specific developments one could, one could pursue in Mexico in, in this direction. So uh, we formed uh, different groups. Each of these groups continued their own discussions for over a year. And they included the persons interested in the in, in the their, in that particular direction, the users in in a way to start creating this ecosystem that it's needed for these developments. Uh, what we asked from them was the following: each of them ha had to identify a specific promising products or services. They had to pinpoint exactly, not not as a general area, but but more precisely what would be good what would be viable in Mexico to do. They would need to identify also the users and the applications related to these products. They had to analyze the maturity level of each of these uh, proposed products or services. And they had to have clarity of, of what is the advantage that these solutions gave over classical uh, or quantum solutions already available. That was what each one of them had to do. As I said, they, they worked for a year. And the result of, of that uh, is what I'm going to describe uh, next. So the, the first product was a portable atomic gravimeter. This gravimeter is a device that uh, is useful for underground exploration and monitoring of risks, for example, volcanological, seism seismological, or structural uh, risk on the underground. It's also useful for app, uh, navigation applications. So all of these applications are really relevant for, for, for Mexico. And that's, what, that's why, why this was an important thing to pursue. The good thing is that in this case, there was already an ongoing collaboration that had been working towards that end for, for some years. This collaboration is called Gravico. You can find more information if you want to know more on this uh, web page. It's a collaboration of these five institutions. And we found uh, that we had a way to implement this gravimeter in a simpler way than it is done for other uh, gravimeters available nowadays. And also, uh, we think we can do it in a much cheaper way. And you can hear more about the details about this 
in the talk of Alejandra, which is uh, uh, in a couple of hours, uh, of the advantage that we have in this sense. So this, this was one of the projects. The second one was in the direction of quantum optical coherence tomography. Here are the institutions related to this uh, project. And we already uh, heard about it in the morning session with the talk of Dorian. Here, the, uh, in order to do these devices, what you need is to have a, a mirror that needs to move to get the tomography signal. But turns out that uh, they have done excellent work in, in Mexico towards replacing the, the, the movement of the mirror and instead going into the spectral regime and getting these measurements free of uh, mirror motion. What that means is that what would take you several minutes to achieve, you can now get it in a much, more, much smaller time because you're not limited by the motion of a mechanical object. This is certainly much more realistic for applications because you don't want to have the patient sitting many minutes in front of the device to, to get the, the image. So this is also another project that is uh, well advanced. They even have a patent and they, they have uh, many applications in ophthalmology, cardiology, dermatology, etc. The third one was in the direction of integrated quantum sensors. Again, this is the group of people working in this project. Uh, this is a transverse uh, project in the sense that it not only creates on, uh, products on its own, but it's also something that all, all the other ones can take advantage of. For example, if I want to do uh, one of the previous two, I would like at the end of the day to make a very compact setup uh, to take it with me. And this is where uh, these systems will, will be very, very helpful. Here we're taking advantage from uh, the fact that in Mexico there is a, a network of clean rooms that we can use. <clears throat> and uh, they have started making uh, devices. They have demonstrated a quantum gate with a one bit. And so this is also very well on, underway. The next one is in the direction of quantum cryptography. Quantum cryptography is uh, very well uh, developed around the world. These again are the institutions related to these ones, so supporting this one. Uh, here, we would like to have uh, our own turnkey QKD system that it's uh, manufactured in Mexico. So it will have service also in Mexico, which would be an advantage. But also uh, it's important to have it because of reasons of uh, national security. This will also be strengthened by adding to these uh, quantum memories, probably made out of cesium or rubidium, and quantum number generators. All of these fall into this category of uh, quantum cryptography. Next, we have the quantum algorithms section that is supported by these institutions. Uh, here, we're not really aiming towards uh, doing the experimental part of quantum computing, like, like the IBM machine here. Instead, it is producing the algorithms that they can take advantage of that. One, one first project that, that we can do to, to start with this would be uh, the, the study of phenotypes, of new phenotypes that ha has applications in biology and medicine. Uh, Salvador, uh, our chair, is uh, in charge of this part and knows much more than I can tell you, so you can ask him. <laughs> uh, here, uh, actually, uh, an interesting story is that uh, this, this part started in the previous Quantum Latino, where I was glad to hear about this Mexican company called Quantum Works that was not thinking of uh, doing products and services. They were already uh, doing that. So I, we, we, it was clear to us that it was important to, to add uh, these to the to the mix. Also, there was this uh, connection with the Mexican government of the, uh, the government of the Mexico City that they were very well aware of these applications. So it was very important to include them. Finally, uh, supporting all this, we want to have an academic program, a diplomat in quantum technologies. For this one, we're aiming for students both from engineering and undergraduate programs related to physics. We want a program that is decentralized, 
the institutions here are the institutions that are already participating or, or are willing to participate in this program so that if somebody wants to learn from cold atoms or for, from photons or, or, or all of them, you can do them because there is participants with all the uh, platforms available. It will have one year duration. It will be modular. You can decide which uh, kind of specialization you want and it will become a graduate graduation option in some institutions. So this slide then summarizes what we have then for the Mexican Initiative on Quantum Technologies. On the vertical axis, I'm showing you the, the platforms that we have for quantum technologies. That includes cold atoms, integrated circuits, nonlinear crystals, algorithms, and the creation of human resources. And then the horizontal axis, we have the different applications of quantum technologies in sensors, communications, or computation, and the products that, that we think we, we, it would be viable for us to do, to pursue, includes uh, an atomic gravimeter, sensors for, from integrated circuits or sources of pairs of photons, a optical coherence tomography in the quantum regime, either from nonlinear crystals or integrated circuits, uh, the development of QKD, uh, both in nonlinear crystals and in algorithms related to that, and supported by memories, and the work of uh, the study of genotype networks. In this uh, map, we can see two transverse uh, things. The first one is the academic program on quantum technologies that will benefit all of them, and also the creation of integrated circuits that also benefits uh, all of them. And I can show you here the maturity level on the TRL scale of each one of them. Some of them are starting, but a few of them already have a, a, a good progress uh, at this point. So with that, I conclude. Uh, as I said, uh, this has been possible thanks to the work of many, many people before us, and in particular during this in, in quantum in, in this initiative. The organization has been in the hands of Pablo Barberis and myself. And each one of the areas, there was a coordinator for the gravimetry part. I was in charge. Quantum imageology, Alfred Uren. Integrated optical circuits, uh, Karina Gray. Quantum cryptography, uh, Mauricio Lopez and Fernando Rojas. And you will hear some of, of it, some of these in the, in the talk of Karina in a few minutes. The part of quantum algorithms is being led by Salvador, our chair, and the education section has been led by Alec Alexander Franco, Georgina Olivares, Ricardo Mendez, and Santiago Caballero. So where are we standing right now? We're standing, um, we have clarity of what we want for this uh, quantum initiative. Uh, we have done our part in, in pointing which is the direction that will benefit in, in the case of Mexico that will be viable. What, what remains to be done is to, to make it a reality, right? To, to find ways to go from this idea to, to a product that is actually uh, having impact in the market. So uh, I'm, I'm very happy to have the opportunity to talk here. And we're certainly very, very open to, to hear about any connections uh, of people interested in, in participating in any of these efforts. And with that, I'm, I'll, I'm happy to take any questions you guys have. Thank you very much, Eduardo, for this great talk. And uh, there's a couple of questions here. The first one comes uh, um, from Inaue by Joel Molina Reyes. And the question is, what is the most mature quantum technology that has been studied or, or developed, sorry, both theoretically and experimentally in Mexico? What will be your answer to that? So you, you can see at the maturity level that, that I just showed, and the most mature, uh, it's the cryptography system uh, that they are developing in Simvestab. The second most mature probably is the atomic gravimeter. And the third one is the uh, crypto, um, optical coherence tomography, which, which already has a patent. So all, all those three are in a very mature stage at this point. They're, they're really at the point where they can make the jump uh, to, to a company or, or a product. Thank you very much. And now let me choose another one. Um, say, Jesus Salvador Gonzalez Flores from the Quantum Information Laboratory at SIG, Centro de Investigación en Computación. 
um, he asks, where can we found, uh, I suppose it's fine, but where can we found the quantum technologies programs in these institutions? So uh, I, I, a, good of, a good resource would be the web page of the network on quantum technologies. In that one, they, they have a list of most of the programs uh, that were included in this network at that point. So I, I would start on, on that point. By the way, uh, this is what the group of people working on this uh, were able to see. I, I hope that if there's uh, other things that, that we were missing, please contact me. I would be happy to hear and, and, and see if there is a way to, to include them. As I said, we, we, we were interested in having efforts that fulfill certain requirements, like, like it should not, be, should not be a single person effort, it should be a, a really a collabor collaborative effort. But I will be very, very happy to hear about all the things that I'm missing, right? One always misses miss, miss those. Thank you very much. Well, one, well, the last question, which I have to say I'm happy not to be uh, forced to answer. Will the government fund the next phase development, meaning our government? Jesus. So we, we certainly hope so. We're, we're uh, talking, we're, we're knocking the door constantly to, to have, uh, have them participating. Just as uh, our colleague from, from Brazil, we think that Conacyt is the, is the right person to, to lead this effort. But if that doesn't happen, uh, we, we want to really make it happen. So uh, we are looking for external investors, uh, people who, who, who believe this, this could work. And I, I certainly find that there is uh, some very mature uh, things going on that, that could, could lead to, to interesting projects, uh, products uh, in the near future. Indeed. Indeed, yeah. Um, well, Eduardo, thank you very much again for joining us. I truly appreciate the time and effort uh, you have delivered with your talk. Thanks for sharing with us you know, all this. Basically, most of the things uh, um, uh, I would say that, that uh, at a very well organized level, um, we Mexicans have been able to work on and uh, you have been able to summarize in such a brilliant lecture. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. And now, please, as for the audience, I would like to invite you to go to the virtual space in which um, Professor, hold on, here is it, Professor Karina Jimenez Garcia will deliver a talk about the quantum technologies that are being developed at CIMESTAP, Centro de Investiga, Centro, at CIMESTAP, sorry. I tend to forget the names and the acronyms when I, when I speak in public, so at CIMESTAP. Centro de Estudios y Investigaciones Avanzadas. Okay, see you in a couple of minutes.